Hello, my name's Keith. I am part of the Data Warehouse Product Management Team at Oracle. And today I'd like to talk to you about using SQL for pattern matching. And we have three good reasons why SQL is the best language for you to use for doing uh, pattern matching in your projects. Firstly, it's rich. We have a very extensive language that allows you to get access to lots of different data sources. It's simple, so if you're already using some of our analytical SQL functions, you'll recognize the new syntax that we've added to help you do SQL pattern matching. And most importantly, it allows you to make rapid changes to your code to suit new business requirements that come in from your users. So how do we do all this? Well, first of all, probably the key part for doing SQL pattern matching, obviously, is getting access to your data. Now, those of you that are using Oracle Database, particularly 12C, know that we support a rich set of data types. But in addition to those, for a lot of pattern matching use cases, you probably want to go out to other data sources um, and pull some information in from there. So if we look at a lot of big data use cases today, we see data sitting in NoSQL databases, we see data sitting on Hadoop, and we'd like to obviously be able to access that and bring all that together into our Oracle database and be able to use SQL against it. And we've added some extensions to our external table function. So if you look at that today in 12C, you'll see some important new keywords. And the two most important keywords that are going to be interest to you for SQL pattern matching are things like Oracle Hive as a data source and Oracle HDFS as a data source. And these will get you access to Hive tables that are sitting on your Hadoop cluster and also JSON style and JSON type documents sitting on your Hadoop cluster. When we go out and grab these types of new types of data sources, you've already done a lot of work setting those up in terms of collecting metadata and information about how the data is structured and stored, and we'll leverage as much of that as we can to help you build the external table command that then allows you to get access to that. Once you have access to these new data sources, of course, now you get the opportunity to run SQL over all of your data, um, which gives you this whole new, rich, simple, agile language for doing pattern matching over big data. So pattern matching, we've added a new syntax, a new command into the 12C database. It's called match recognize, as you can see here. And it allows us to do a number of things. So it allows us to take a data set and logically divide it up so that, and order the data so that we can look for and search for patterns within that data set. And we search for those patterns using regular expressions. And for those of you that are used to doing pattern matching with languages such as Perl, etc., you'll be very familiar with the syntax that we've added to help you define and specify the types of patterns that you're searching for. It's an extension really of our regular expressions that we currently have today. And although regular expressions are limited to um, specific use cases within a column, the advantage of pattern matching with match recognize is that we can now search across columns, across rows, and backwards and forwards within our data set. So we have tremendous capability here to be able to search for various types of patterns. So let's give you a, an example here. This is probably the best way to explain it. Let's say we have a business requirement. We're a bank and we need to look for suspicious money transfers. And we have regulations, obviously, that we need to meet for this. And let's say we want to look for three or more small transfers within a 30-day window. And then after that, we're looking for a large transfer of, say, over a million dollars within 10 days of the last small one. So we're looking for the small ones that are obviously testing the system to see whether we are looking for a pattern, and then a large transfer out of funds to another account. And obviously, we want to pick up on each of those 
pick up the transfer dates and the amount of money that's involved. So how do we do that? Well, here you'll see that we have a table. You can see the time, the date of each uh, entry. We have the account name. We have the event, whether it's a deposit, a transfer, or a withdrawal. And we have the amount that's going into or out of our account. So what we're looking for, as you can see here, what we'd like to be able to identify is these three small transfers that have occurred in the last 30 days. So they're our initial flag, if you like, to say that something suspicious potentially could be about to happen here. And sure enough, at the end, as you can see here, this last transfer within 10 days, we see a million dollars going out of our account and being transferred somewhere else. So that's the pattern that we're looking for. So how, how would we code for that? Well, we've taken existing syntax that you're probably already, already familiar with if you've used our analytical SQL functions, and we've added that into and built around that a new clause called match recognize, which you see here. So we're now going to build this up in four simple stages. So the first stage is we obviously need to group the data by, in this case, firstly a user ID. So we want to look at all of John's transactions. And then we want to order those in time so we can go through them in sequence and start to establish this 30 day and 10 day rule. So we have our partition by and our order by clause. That allows us, if you like, to then search for and find the pattern. Next part, step two, we need to establish what the pattern is. How are we going to actually find these events? And we do this using uh, elements such as X and three and brackets, and these mean specific things. So the X is the event that I'm looking for. So that's gonna to group together my three transfers. The three here says, tells me that I'm looking for three occurrences or at least three occurrences of these events. The next part is that I'm looking for this large transfer, and the large transfer I'm going to identify with the variable y. So now we have x that's going to occur three times, or at least three times, and we have y, which is my big transfer. But what exactly does that mean? If we describe x, we would say that we need an amount, which we pull from the table, the data source, and we need that to be less than 2,000 pounds. And from the first time that we establish an event where we're transferring data to the last time where we find that we're transferring a small amount, that difference has got to be less than 30 days. And that's what you see here in the syntax that you're seeing on the screen here. Now we have established the first part of X, we can establish Y. And as you can see here, Y is an event where the value is greater than a million dollars or equal to a million dollars. So that now establishes my pattern as to how I'm gonna search for my data, what I'm looking for, and what each element actually is. And of course, when we're looking for that final transfer, it needs to be within 10 days of the last or the smallest transfer. So we're looking across boundaries here, and this is where we get the richness of the syntax, allowing us to move backwards and forwards in our data set. Now, having established the pattern, we now want to understand what it is that we're going to return to our users. What pieces of information does the business need from us to pull out of this pattern? And we want to find the first element, the first time when we find a transfer. We want to find the last time we find a transfer. And we want to find the largest amount. So we establish exactly how much it was that was transferred out as part of this large um, final transfer. And you can see here the X time and the Y time and the Y amount point to our variables that we um, established earlier as part of our pattern and define statements. 
and points us into specific rows and columns within our data set. Then the last part, the sort of final step we have is controlling the amount of information that we return. Obviously, we can tell the users a lot of detail about what they're going to see within the pattern, or we can just give them a summary report. Here's the pattern that we found, and here's the high-level summary information that we found. And in this case, we're actually going to give them quite detailed information. So we're going to go for, as you see here, one row for each match. Now we've got all of the information, we've captured it, we've determined what we're going to output to our business users. We can include those elements into our select statement to return to our users, either into our business intelligence tool or our SQL developer or whatever it is that our application might be that's running this command. So you can see here, using those of you that are familiar with SQL, that are familiar with our analytical SQL functions, will recognize a lot of the commands and syntax that we're using. So hopefully there's not too much that is new there to you. And one of the key benefits of moving this inside the Oracle database is, and using SQL, is that it's very, very easy to change this. So if we take this money transfer um, example again and now let's say the business comes back to us and says well actually the requirements have changed what we actually need to find now is have the transfers been to different accounts is it not just going to one person are we doing a lot of the smaller transfers to lots of different accounts so it, it's less obvious that the big transfers actually going to occur so we'd now like you to check to see who's actually on the receiving end of the small accounts, because maybe they're important to us as well, as well as the person who gets the big transfer. So how would we go about making those changes? In a lot of cases with other languages, that could be a, quite a complex and lengthy process to go through. But because we're using SQL, it's relatively easy for us to do. So if we look at our data set now, you'll see that it's changed, and we've inherited a new column, so now our data set tells us who's receiving the information. And we can see here that we've got a number of different people receiving small amounts of money from our account. And those are still occurring within 30 days. But we want to make sure that of all of those small transactions that come through, that the sum's less than 20K. And maybe that, that 20K has some significance to it from a fraud point of view. Maybe that's a legal requirement. And then of course we see the final big transfer here going to Tim that occurs within 10 days of the last small transfer. So how do we update our SQL statement to cope with these new changes? So you see most of the syntax here I've already filled in. We've used and seen this in the previous slides. What we need to do is make some very simple changes. So we just add a new line in here that says, I need to check who's received the money and was it different to the person who received the last small transfer? So I'm looking at the previous X transfer to and comparing that with my current X transfer to. So that takes care of my first change that I need to make. And I also now need to make some additional changes to my Y element here to check that the sum for all of my small transfers is less than 20,000. So you can see here that this has actually taken us very little time to make what is probably quite a significant business change to our code and it's still very readable, it's still very simple. If we took this to the business users and said is this the syntax, is this the the requirement that you're looking for? Does this meet the legal requirements that you have to deal with now? It's very easy for them to understand it. So moving your pattern matching inside the Oracle database, making advantage of SQL gives you three key benefits. You can now access lots of different data sources. So you get access to your Oracle database, you get access to data sitting on Hadoop, 
You can even access data sitting in NoSQL database. Bring those all together, access them with SQL, using a simple syntax with our match recognized clause, which is based on elements, syntax that you've already seen and used with analytical SQL. But most importantly, where your pattern requirements change and evolve over time, it's very easy to go back in and make those changes and take on new business requirements and push those requirements back to the business users in a much, much quicker time frame. I hope this has helped you understand how we can make your life easier with SQL pattern matching. Thank you very much.